Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we've got an old-fashioned GPU battle on our hands. It's the GeForce GTX 970 versus the Radeon R9 290. Now, recently I did revisit the 290. I checked out how it's stacked up against more modern GPUs, but that was more of an upgrade guide, I suppose. Today we have the main event, and it is a battle that I know many of you have been very interested in, and I suppose after five years, a lot of you just want to know which GPU is the best. Before that, today's video sponsor is Deepcool and their amazing anti-leak technology featured in the new Captain 240 Pro. After years of research and development, Deepcool has created a leak-free all-in-one liquid cooler using their patented automatic pressure relieving radiator, which, as the name suggests, vents any air pressure from within the loop to avoid leakage. For more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so let's quickly rewind for a moment. Back in September 2014, NVIDIA revealed the GTX 970 for the first time, some 10 months after the Radeon R9 290's release. So the 970 was the much newer product and unsurprisingly it came in offering a little extra performance at a slightly better price. AMD did quickly respond with aggressive R9 290 price cuts, but with the 970 generally 10 to 15% faster on average and considerably more power efficient, it went on to be a bestseller, despite the VRAM controversy. Throughout 2015, the GTX 970 was typically the punchier GPU, and with a slew of high quality AIB models to pick from, it easily outsold the R9 290. However, many of those who purchased the R9 290 were jumping up and down about how it would be a better investment down the track. Whether or not they were talking five years down the track, we'll never know. But at least today we can settle which GPU offers the best performance in 2019. For this test we have 33 games, all of which have been tested at 1080p as this is the more suitable resolution for these GPUs, and we'll look closely at the results for 13 games before moving on to our usual head-to-head -head comparison graphs. The standard GPU test system has been used, which comprises of a Core i9-9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. Okay, that's everything, let's get into the blue bar graphs. First up we have Apex Legends, and right away we're seeing some pretty neck and neck performance between the GTX 970 and R9 290. This one's simply too close to call, and with just a frame in it, which is well within the margin of error, it's safe to say performance was identical using either GPU. When compared to a modern GPU, we're looking at GTX 1063 GB light performance, so not amazing, but given their age, it is also reasonably impressive. Moving on, we have The Division 2, and this is a title that works exceptionally well with AMD hardware, as evidenced by Vega 64 beating the GTX 1080 and RTX 2060, while the 580 crushed the 1060. So with those comparisons previously established, it comes as little surprise that the R9 290 absolutely dusts the GTX 970, beating it by a 19% margin. The 970 does perform significantly better than the 3GB 1060, but even so, you will want to dial down the quality settings a little bit. Next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is another title that sees AMD GPUs doing very well, and here the GTX 970 was 12% slower than the R9 290. The 970 basically mimicked the GTX 1063GB, or I guess you could say the 1060 mimics the GTX 970. Either way, performance was decent, despite trailing the R9 290. Okay, so I promise this order wasn't picked on purpose, but here we have yet another total that works extremely well with AMD GPUs. Again, the GTX 970 was 12% sold in the R9 290, this time when testing with Forza Horizon 4, though I should note that despite that performance was still very playable. Still in three of the more recently released titles, we've seen the R9 290 doing exceptionally well. Finally, we have a solid win for the GTX 970, this time when testing with Hitman 2 using the DirectX 11 API. That said, I should just quickly point out that enabling the new patched in DirectX 12 mode uh, doesn't really change things at all. The 970 was still the superior GPU in this title. Performance in Just Cause 4 was pretty similar using either the 970 or 290. The GeForce GPU did pull ahead in our test when looking at the average frame rate. However, the 1% low result was identical with both managing 40 FPS. So overall, the experience was much the same. Moving on, we find a rather close battle when testing with Resident Evil 2. The R9 290 was just 6 FPS faster at 1080p, and this meant the 970 performed more like a 3 GB 1060. Again, not a bad result given the average frame rate was 66 FPS, but this one is still a clear win for the 290. 
Fortnite is a game that does favor NVIDIA GPUs thanks to its use of the Unreal Engine 4. This can be seen when comparing the GTX 1060 and RX 580 for example. It can also be seen when comparing older GPUs such as the GTX 970 and R9 290. Here the 970 was 18% faster delivering 87 FPS on average. The GTX 970 also stacked up really well in Metro Exodus with an average of 48 FPS at 1080p using the ultra quality settings. This meant it was 23% faster than the R9 290, placing it basically on par with the 6GB GTX 1060 and RX 590. So a very solid result for the old Maxwell GPU. Next up we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and here the GTX 970 is more competitive than I was expecting. I recall this being a pretty easy win for the R9 290 back in the day, but here it was just 5% faster on average. That said, the 1% low performance was still more consistent, though the experience was still extremely smooth with the GTX 970. And then moving on, frame rates were surprisingly similar when testing with Battlefield 5. Here the GTX 970 was just 3 FPS faster, equating to a 5% margin. And this is why I typically call it a tie when the margin is 5% or less. Still, this meant the 970 did very well in this title. As we've seen many times already, it's often very similar to the 3 GB GTX 1060. Second last game tested is World of Tanks, and this is a title that generally doesn't like AMD GPUs, or perhaps it's AMD GPUs that don't like World of Tanks. Either way, it's not great news for the red team. The R9 290 was still able to deliver very playable performance, but we see a 36% uplift when looking at the GTX 970, and that's obviously a rather significant performance improvement. And the last game that we're going to look closely at the results for is Far Cry New Dawn, and here we have a tie. 70 FPS apiece, and that placed both the GTX 970 and R9 290 on par with the 3 GB 1060. Performance at 1080p using the ultra quality preset certainly was respectable, and you won't need to turn down any quality settings here. Now, this is one area where the Maxwell GPUs always had a big advantage over the AMD competition, and it's an advantage NVIDIA still holds today. For what was a similar level of performance, the R9 290 drove total system consumption up by 30%, and that's obviously quite a significant figure. This is why the GTX 970 graphics cards typically ran much cooler and quieter than the R9 290 models. Okay, so that's how the GTX 970 R9 290 stack up in all those titles, and it seemed as though we saw quite a bit of back and forth, so I'm really interested to see which model was faster overall. Based on what we've seen so far, I don't imagine the 970 is still 10 to 15% faster like what most reviewers, including myself, found back in 2014. That said, let's just jump into the 33 game comparison to find out what's what. Well, there's your fine wine working right there, aka AMD's slow driver development. Seriously though, that is an impressive comeback for the R9 290, but it is interesting to note that while overall they were much the same, the 970 was faster by a 5% margin or greater in 16 of the 33 games tested, while the 290 was faster by a 5% margin or greater in just 11 of the games. So the 970 certainly was the more consistent performer. The smaller 3.5GB primary VRAM partition heard it in Wolfenstein, especially with the settings used for testing. And then we saw that Dirt 4 also favours the Radeon GPUs using CMAA, while Stranger Brigade is an AMD-sponsored title and well-optimised for Radeon GPUs. AMD also does well in The Division 2, Sniper Elite 4, Forza Horizon 4, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so no surprises there. It is mostly the older titles or NVIDIA sponsored games where the green team does well. A game such as World of Tanks, Warhammer 2, Metro Exodus, Project Cars 2 and Fortnite for example. Out of interest I decided to look at the game's release dates to see if the R9 290 was getting the better of the GTX 970 in more recently released titles. While I did only test 11 releases from 2018 you can see that the wins are pretty evenly split. But for the 2019 titles released so far that we've tested, so the more demanding titles released this year then, the R9 290 is thus far getting the better of the GTX 970. Not sure this means much just yet, like I said, just looking at this out of pure curiosity. Moving on, I decided to see how the GTX 970 stacked up against the GTX 1060 6GB, and on average the GTX 970 was 15% slower. So here we're comparing a 2014 release with an MSRP of $330 US to a 2016 release with a $250 US MSRP. And for those wondering, back when we reviewed the GTX 1060 6GB, so 
when we reviewed it at launch, the 970 was 15% slower. So we can safely say that no Nvidia gimping, as it's often referred to, appears to have taken place. Of course, Nvidia doesn't actively gimp performance. We've proven this time and time again on the channel. It's a complete load of nonsense and plenty of other media outlets have also proven this. Nvidia is certainly guilty of prioritizing newer architectures while optimizations for older generations tend to come a bit later, if at all for the really old models. Now, if you've been holding out all these years for a three to $400 upgrade, the GeForce RTX 2060 might be of interest. After four and a half years, you're looking at an 86% performance boost on average for roughly the same price. The 2060's MSRP is $20 higher. So that's about a 20% boost each year, which isn't a lot, but by today's standards, it's certainly not terrible either. And really, this is your best option at this price point at least your best readily available option at this price point. Because yes, I know, sometimes Vega 56 are selling for $300 in some regions, but not all regions and not Australia. But anyway, obviously you can see what options you have available in your region. If you have a $300 Vega 56 graphics card, then yeah, that might be worth buying. Anyway, in classic J's two cents style, I digress. Well, there you have it. The GTX 970 went from being 10 to 15% faster four years ago to just a percent in 2019, at least based on our 33 game test sample. Also, despite its three and a half gigabytes of VRAM, the GTX 970 still does seem to be the more reliable performer, which might surprise some of you, especially after you've no doubt heard over and over again how it's doomed and will be completely useless before too long because of that limited VRAM buffer. Well, that obviously hasn't happened yet, and with a few minor tweaks, the GTX 970 can carve its way through all the latest and greatest titles at 1080p without an issue. Still, to give credit where I suppose credit's due, the Radeon R9 290 is still extremely impressive, and in 2019, it's there's really nothing wrong with it. Personally, I'm completely attributing the R9 290's comeback to AMD's driver development, and not anything to do with the partition to VRAM buffer or NVIDIA neglecting driver support. Uh, fine wine is really what it's all about here. That is AMD getting on top of their driver optimization over the past few years. And that's really why the Arno 290 has come along so nicely. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the benchmarks in this video. And remember you can jump over to our Patreon page for all 33 graphs if you want to take a closer look at any of the games tested. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.